Alright everyone, and uh, this is Benevolent History here, and I'm here to give you, uh, I guess, a pretty special um, video. This time I'm just going to give you uh, a basic rundown of all the factions, the, strength and, the strengths and weaknesses and whatnot. Um, I guess um, it, it's good to know the various strengths and weaknesses of these factions. And that's how you exactly um, play effectively with them. If you know the strengths and you know the weaknesses of each faction, you'll understand which faction counters others and which faction is most suitable in certain situations. Now, um, the big one, Rome. I, I think I'll be good with Rome. First of all, you should know that the four Roman factions are basically the same thing. Um, the only difference is some of them, the colors and... Um, they have different gladiator units, but in my opinion, the gladiator units are pretty useless. So I'm going to go with Roman Julii. So um, the Romans have uh, basically the best, the base, basically the best Roman, um, s not the best Roman setup, but the uh, Romans, basically the strength lies in the fact that they have um, excellent sword infantry and obviously this these urban cards will counter any um, any phalanx faction units especially Carthage or Macedon um, Rome was your man when when your opponent chooses those factions and Romans combine excellent in excellent sword and armed infantry with um, with a uh, e pretty good Pretty decent cav actually. Praetorian cav are probably the best, um, p basically the best, um, one of the best cav in the game. Um, the only, the only um, cavalry units that could really counter them are chariots, um, uh, chariots, also cataphracts, and head hunting maidens. But but the Praetorian Cav can easily counter Sacred Band of Carthage, Companion Cav of Macedon, so and um, Romans also have long range archers, the Archer Auxilia, and they also have regular Roman archers, so you could bring up to eight. They also have decent light Cav, the Cavalry Auxilia, a missile javelin on Cav, pretty good. Now I guess we could go on to Macedon. Yeah, Macedon's strength relies on um, its pretty decent archer component because it has it could use it has long range archers, tier Cretan archers, regular archers, so you could bring up to eight. Um, companion cav, pretty decent cav with a big charge bonus. Um, it it can. Companion Cav used effectively can defeat Praetorian Cav because um, Companion Cav had that better charge bonus because Companion Cav had a charge bonus of nine, um, Praetorian Cav of only six. They also Macedon also has these light lancers, um, pretty pretty cheap Cav but pretty deadly on the charge but very weak in melee. See they have a charge bonus of nine and. Who, who could forget the Macedonian royal pikemen? Pretty decent pikemen, not 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 the best um, pike, not the best phalanx in the game, but royal pikemen hold their own pretty well. Now on to Egypt. Ah, oh, Egypt. God I love Egypt. First of all, you should know that Egypt is like uh, the best faction in the game if used correctly. Egypt, Egypt can totally eliminate all other factions. The only faction that really ha comes close to countering Egypt is uh, Carthage, Greece, perhaps Britannia and Macedon. But I suggest bringing um, either Carthage or Greece. Those are the really only two options against Egypt. Anyway, Egypt has um, chariot units, um, pretty weakest, pretty weak chariot units. But chariot units are still chariot units. They'll slaughter any. Cavalry unit essentially, but uh, you should know that the chariot units are pretty vulnerable to missiles. 
Um, Egypt also has these chariot archers. You can see here. Egypt also has long range bowmen, pharaoh's bowmen, and they also have regular bowmen. So essentially, you could bring with Egypt, you could bring eight right eight archers, um, f combination of pharaoh's bowmen and regular bowmen, and you could bring in two Egyptian chariot archers. So that makes a total of ten missile units within CWB rules. And Egypt Egypt's infantry is the is its weakest point. Um, these Pharaoh's Guards are the best that Egypt has to offer, but you should know that Pharaoh's Guards have no shields, and um, in that case, the next, the next, if you want a Phalanx that has shields, um, the next best, best thing is these Nile Spearmen, but nonetheless, both, both Spearmen are pretty weak. They'll both lose out to um, any, any, um, Better pikemen like Silver Shield pikemen, Royal pikemen, um, certainly the Sacred Band, Armored Hoplite. All of those pikemen, all those Phalanx units, will eliminate Egypt's Phalanx units. And for Seleucids, now let's see Seleucids. Um, Seleucids is a pretty good faction, pretty decent, I would say. Um, this um, Seleucids' strength lies in the diversity of Cav. Um, Seleucids can br have a choice of bringing cataphracts, the, the best heavy cab in the game. Um, they have a ch choice of bringing side chariot units. You could also, they also have pretty decent like cav, militia cav, you can see here. Ja Jav cav are pretty useful, they also have Greek cav. Uh, the only bad thing about Seleucids is that they, ha they only have six archers, you can see here. They have no special archers, so they only can bring a maximum of six and they have no horse archers so any skirmish um, fight Seleucids would be an obvious disadvantage against many other factions now the infantry of the Seleucids are pretty decent um, you have a choice between Silver Shield Legionaries which are basically like um, legionary cohorts of the um, of the Romans but these Silver Shield Legionaries have um, a little bit less morale and you also have the silver shield pikemen which are decent pikemen units um, they're not they're nothing special but they get the job done now we have Carthage I forgot to do that let's turn this faction off Carthage Now, Carthage is um, a faction that relies heavily on its Sacred Band Infantry. These Sacred Band Infantry are probably the most cost-effective unit in the game because they're pretty cheap and they're really, really tough u Phalanx units. Um, these Sacred Band will beat anything that you have on the field except Spartans and Urban Cohorts. However, um, Carthage's weakness relies on the fact that it has no archers. Instead, Carthage relies on its slingers. You can see here, regular slingers or Balearic slingers. That that means you could still bring a missile component of eight, but they're just slingers, so they have a range disadvantage. Although it, I should say that these Balearic slingers they have um, the range of equal to regular archers, I believe. Um. Carthage also has the Sacred Band Cav, but um, Sacred Band Cav should is not really the prime asset of Carthage. You should know that Car Carthage um, has also a decent selection of light cavalry units. They have Numidian mercenaries, which are basically just um, more expensive version of the Numidian cavalry. But these guys will get the job done. They put the really good cavalry units, I would say. And they also have pretty cheap round shield cav. When it's gold to gold upgraded, it only costs 600. Very good against archers. Now Parthia. Parthia relies on mainly um, its horses, its cataphract units, and its archers to win the battle. Um, with Parthia, you could bring up to 8 cataphracts because you have these cataphract camels. So. Or you could play more conservatively, or you could play more conventionally, and bring six cataphracts and two horse archers like that. 
and you can also bring some Persian cavalry, which has long range missiles, which are horse archers with long range missiles and better morale and better stats. And um, Parthia also has archers, can bring up to eight with these regular archers and these slingers. They have no long range archers, so be careful about that. And Parthia has a decent as a Arab cav just light cav pretty expensive but we'll get the job done and uh, let's see Parthia's infantry is I have to say to be blunt the infantry stinks um, your best bet with Parthia is to just bring regular peasants as infantry to soak up missiles it's no point bringing Eastern infantry in my opinion it's better to invest your money into these heavy cataphract units. Now we have Pontus. Pontus is a fact is a uh, probably the most balanced chariot faction out there. It's not um, they're still a pain in the butt to face, but it's better than fighting Egypt. Um, Pontus has an uh, excellent selection of cavalry units. They have light cav, Pontic light cav. They have um, I would say medium cav. Pontic Heavy Cav, they have these Capid Ocean Cav, which are really, really tough, heavy, heavy cavalry units on horseback. However, you should know that these Capid Ocean Cav really have, um, they have no maces, so they're basically like cataphracts, except these guys have no maces, so they're not as effective. What a Pontic player would really bring was, is are these side chariots. That's basically um, Pontus's Pontic um, asset is these side chariot units that could totally decimate enemy cavalry units. And Pontic has these chariot archers, typical. And Pontic infantry is pretty pretty strong, I would say, for a pretty strong for a um, chariot faction because their infantry they could bring up to. They could bring bronze shields, which are basically like silver shield pikemen, except these guys are way cheaper. Pontus can also bring up to six archers and two chariot archers, so they lose out in the archer fight against factions like uh, Egypt. But Pontus is, Pontus is still pretty good. Let's see, Gaul. Oh man, Gaul is one of these uh, lesser factions that um, you should really only use for humiliation purposes or if your opponent also brought a pretty weak faction. Now let's see, Gaul, the biggest asset is the Forest Warbands. These guys are really, really good at Urshkos except they cost as much as Cataphracts and that's a problem. Um, I would say that Gaul would be playable if Gaul had cheaper Forest Warbands, but oh well. You should know those, these Forest of Warbands are really, really good. They have long-range missiles. They can hide anywhere. They have excellent morale. You can see, they're, um, <laughs> they have everything except they're pretty expensive. I mean, these Forest of Warbands even have spears, so they can take it out and be able to fend against light cavalry attacks. Gaul also has a mediocre infantry, chosen swordsman. Regular swordsmen, naked fanatics, warbands, just typical um, barbarian things, druids for morale boosting purposes, warhounds, and a mediocre barbarian noble cav. But against major factions like Romans, for example, Gaul would would definitely lose. Germania. Now this is an interesting faction because um I've I don't I personally don't have a lot of experience with Germania. But I'll just tell you the assets. Germania has pretty decent heavy cav, a uh, pretty decent heavy cav force. They have these Gothic cav, probably the best barbarian cav units in the game. These guys, I believe, they could hold their own against companion and sacred band cav, but they lose out to Praetorian cav because of the um, inferior stats. Um, Germania also has an interesting variety of units: warhounds, obviously. Um, light, barbarian light cav, which are pretty really good um, light cav actually. Um, they uh, these Germanians have chosen archer warbands, which are like 
which are okay, but you with Germania, you really don't want to bring that heavy Ultra Force because it's not worth bringing Chosen Ultra Warbands. I mean, if, if, if Germania had regular Ultra Warbands, they would be good, but um, these Chosen Ultra Warbands are too expensive to bring as a real Ultra Force. They have a pretty decent selection of Barbarian Infantry, the best in the game the best barbarian infantry in the game um, these spear warbands can form a pretty weak phalanx but a phalanx nonetheless um, which will definitely beat any other barbarian faction they also have these chosen axemen which are very weak defense but if you get them into the fighting um, in front of uh, let's say a sword infantry um, these chosen axemen will excel because the chosen axemen of Germania really really good units that you can slaughter units very quickly it's, it's just that these chosen axemen have very low defense um, so these chosen axemen will lose out to phalanx engagements but that the surprisingly really good against urban cards um, I've seen I have not seen but I I, th I believe that these chosen axemen can actually kill urban cards and um, Germania also has the night raiders that um, Frighten enemy units. Um, pretty mediocre stats, but they frighten enemy units, and that's the real asset. And finally, these berserkers, which will go berserk and slaughter anything in the path in the path except phalanx units. But uh, these berserkers are pretty vulnerable to missiles, though. So if you have archers and you see these berserkers, it's um a good target to. It's a good. These guys are a good target to aim for. Um, then we have the Screechy Woman unit, which um, decreased the morale of enemy units, but increased the morale of your own units. Basically like the Druids. Now we have uh, Britannia. And Brit Brit the Britons, um... <sighs> the Britons are like the major, a major faction, actually. The pub I think they're the only barbarian... No, Apart from Scythia, they're the only barbarian faction that could hit, hold their own against um, these major factions. Because these guys, first of all, these guys have the best chariot units in the game with 5 hit points each. These barbarian warlords will slaughter anything in the past. And better yet, these guys cannot run amok, which is very, very good. These Britons also have... Uh, British light chariots, which are um, um, chariot archers essentially. Um, they have warhounds for morale damaging purposes. They have um, f for a skirmish component. These guys have a pretty weak skirmish component. Um, six slingers and two British light chariots. That's the best you could do with Britannia. However, Britain's real strength relies on these head hurlers in conjunction with these chariot units but I'll mention these head hurlers first now these head hurlers you should know that um, first of all you should read read the description they're very effective against armor they have a missile attack of 17 I'm not upgraded if you upgrade them to gold attack that's 20 so they have a 20 missile attack um, with uh, and the missile attack is effective against armor units so these head hurlers will totally slaughter enemy infantry and cataphracts if you get these head hurlers in a good position however you should um the weakness of these head hurlers relies on the fact that they that these guys are very vulnerable to missiles only to defense you can see they're horrible horrible defense so these head hurlers can totally slaughter infantry it's just that you need to keep them safe and make sure you use these slingers and light chariots and these War barbarian warlords to your supreme effect to um, hold to protect these guys so it's best to hold the head holders back until like late game phase they also have a selection of chosen swordsmen swordsmen world warriors but in my bet in my opinion you should just ignore these barbarian infantry instead go for the things on the right maybe you could bring a peasant or so but it's best to just stick with the uh, chariots and the and the slingers, head hurlers, and light chariots. 
Now we have Armenia, which is another cataphract faction, probably the most balanced cataphract faction, I would say. Um, these guys have cataphracts, that's their main asset. Um, and they could bring up to six regular ultras and two horse ultras. You can see there. They also have cataphract ultras, but in my opinion, these cataphract ultras are useless because they're too expensive. And they don't serve the purpose as well. I mean, look at it. They have the same attack as regular horse archers. Just the horse archers are way cheaper. So it's more cost effective to use these horse archers. You could you could see that um, they also have the Arab Light Cav. Which are basically, just essentially Parthian Light Cav. Um, the, uh, these Armenians also have a mediocre set of infantry, um, Armenian legionaries, basically like the Roman principes, and these heavy spearmen, which are basically like hoplites. So, just regular hoplites. So, these guys, um, they won't win any fight against super, against special infantry like pike, silver shield pikemen or um, urban cords. They won't win, but they'll hold their own for a little bit. Now we have Dacians, which are Dacians are actually a pretty interesting faction. Um, they're basically like Scythia in the fact that they could bring, um, they could bring cho they could bring up to let's see, they could bring up to um, ten missile units, some chosen ultra war bands, and some regular ultra war bands, and some Scythian mercenaries, and apparently a uh, sparrow just. <laughs> just um came and fl flew down onto my um Porsche but oh well <laughs> that, that was pretty random but anyway these guys can bring a maximum of 10 missile units which is um very can totally um slaughter a lot of factions because um 10 missile units are a lot of missile units and these guys can totally eliminate other factions missile component Dacia also has um, these Barbarian Noble Cav, very weak Heavy Cav. They also have some Light Cav, Barbarian Cavalry, pretty good Light Cav, but against any Heavy Armored Cavalry units, these guys will obviously lose. They have Warhounds, and they also have uh, just ran very... Um, just barbarian infantry to in general. The only real barbarian infantry that you should bring are these Falksmen because Falksmen are actually pretty good infantry units. Um, it's just that the, these guys are very weak on the defense, but they they'll easily um, overpower. Well, not overpower. They'll easily turn the tide of any cavalry fight. However, be wary that these guys' defense sucks, so you have to keep in them back until late game phase. Now for Greece. Anyway, let's see. Greece relies on its hoplites to win. You could use. Um, I suggest you using armored hoplites because these Spartan hoplites are too expensive. Maybe one or two units, but these Spartan hoplites, um, they're very expensive. You can see here that. One gold gold upgraded um, our hoplites is basically equal to Spartan hoplites. Um, these armored hoplites also have higher defense, so they're more resist resistant to missiles. However, I should mention that these armored hoplites, on a one to one engagement with um, Sacred Band hoplites of Carthage, these guys will lose. And uh, Greece also has a very wide selection of foot archers. You have regular archers, you have Cretan archers, long range archers, and you have Rhodian slingers, which are basically like Balearic slingers. And uh, you also have a pretty weak selection of cavalry units, but the light cav, and they get the job done of running down enemy cav units. So, Greece is a faction that I would be comfortable using against um, any chariot factions like. Britannia, Pontus, or 
e even Egypt. Now we see Numidia here, and Numidia relies on, um, well, I first I, I should first say that Numidia is one of those um, uh, weak factions, those minor factions, but Numidia is a pretty good, decent faction. Um, the real, com the real asset lies in the fact that they have, they could bring six regular archers and two slingers that makes a total of eight. Um, not the best against all other factions, but still pretty decent selection of archers. These these um these Numidians also have the best Jav Cav unit in the game, at least the best light Jav Cav unit in the game. These Numidian Cav units, the very cost-effective units, very tough, very um strong, very cheap. Numidia also has these Numidian Camel Riders and this Long Shield Cav, and the Camel Riders obviously um, counter any heavy Cav force. And uh, but you should know that these Numidian cav Camel Riders, as with all camels, are uh, slower, and these ga these guys exclu exclusively cannot go into wedge formation. But the Long Shield Cav can, but the Long Shield Cav are pretty um pretty weak. Um, the okay light cab, but they will not fare against fare well against um, regular heavy cav. New median selection of infantry units are pretty decent for a minor faction. They have these new median legionaries, which are um, equal to Armenian legionaries and the principe of the Romans. And they also have desert infantry, which are very good against. Um, very good units against very cheap and very effective units against cavalry. It's just that um, spearmen, these spearmen, as with all other spearmen, are slow and obviously cavalry are faster than them. Now we're with Scythia. Scythia is essentially like Dacia, except that Scythia has. No infantry whatsoever except these axemen, but no one uses these axemen because these guys are not cost effective. Um, it's not worth bringing these guys. Instead, it's worth bringing these peasants just to soak up missiles. Essentially, Scythia is just like Dacia, except that Scythia has better cavalry component. These Scythia nobles, these head hunting maidens, and they have less infantry. So these Scythians can bring a total of, uh, let's see, 10 missile units as well in CWB rules. Um, the Scythians the also have an interesting selection of horse archers. They have the Scythian noble woman. Um, I'm still experimenting with these ga with these um, girls, so uh, they're long range, but and they have less men, but they're still um, relatively cheap, so it might be very useful to use these guys because they have long range missiles. They also, there's also um, Scythia Noble Archers which are um, pretty expensive but these guys have a lot of attack as you can see. They're basically like the Persian Cavalry of Parthia. So that's Scythia. Oh, I forgot to mention that these Scythian Headhunting Maidens are light cavalry units but like cavalry units, they're very cheap, but they are very effective against armor. And if you're using these hand hunting maidens and gets cataphracts, um, you will win if you get the charge bonus. Um, however, if the enemy cataphracts um, get a charge bonus on these head hunting maidens, these girls will not last very long. Now we have Spain. Oh, good old Spain. These guys are like the worst faction in the game. You should know one of the minor factions. Um, Span Spain's real asset relies on its skirmish component of slingers. Um, they're not very great. You can see here that they, you could only bring up to eight regular archers, and these guys are just plain slingers. There's some Balearic slingers, but um, these guys just won't turn the tide in their favor as well. Now uh, Spain also has a decent selection of light cav 
they have these long shield cavalry units as you can see here um, decent like have but these guys will lose out to heavy cavalry units um, Spain also has Scutarii which are very very cheap but very very weak and sucky um, infantry units they also have naked fanatics but these guys are very um, very weak on defense and Spain also has these bull warriors but the bad thing these guys, these bull warriors are okay but the bad thing is that they're very expensive you can see if I want a gold gold upgrade them these guys are like 2,000 you 2,000 these guys are like sparsons except they're not worth bringing if all if these bull warriors had um, let's say less money if they costed less um, they'd be a viable component to bring for Spain but unfortunately they're just too expensive for a 15k CWB battle and finally we ended off with Thrace uh, Thrace is um uh let, let me think Thrace is like the very weak phalanx faction um, they have a uh, phalanx pikemen the, the best pike units are these phalanx pikemen that's really the only real asset um, these phalanx pike pikemen will um, they're not as good as let's say silver shield pikemen or bronze shields or royal pikemen but these guys um, will get the job done I would say especially against um, any barbarian factions you come across I would also say that the the Th Thracians also have a Falksman, one of the only factions that do. Um, these Falksmen, as with Dacian Falksmen, are pretty decent against enemy cavalry units, but still, these um, Falksmen will have very little defense. <sighs> these the the Thracians also have Bastarne, which are exclusive to um, Thrace, and these guys are pretty pretty oh, interesting units um, they have high attack but they have very low defense but they have two hit points each which uh, personally I don't think that makes up the use of them because um, I, I suggest I personally don't bring Bastarni with um, Thrace I think it's better just to I personally think it's better just to maybe use Phanax Pikeman or Falksman in conjunction, in conjunction with each other or perhaps you might want to go with the um, with the uh, uh, phalanx heavy build and bring a few heavily upgraded militia hoplites instead because these guys are really cheap except these guys are pretty weak as well so you have to rely on overwhelming numbers to win the infantry fight the weakness of Thrace relies in its cavalry and its archers um, Thrace can only bring up to 6 archers woohoo pretty weak but it's better than nothing and uh, Thrace also has a pretty much Greece it's basically pretty much Greece except with less archers and less infantry um, because these these Thracians can bring a, a few militia a few light cav Greek cav militia cav not very um, not very special just light cav there you go and anyway, and I think that's basically all the factions. I might have missed, um, there's a rebel faction, but I won't mention that because, um, um, the bi there's also a rebel faction, but personally, I don't think pe it's not, people don't use rebel faction that many, much, that much of tournament. If you want to know a lot about the rebel faction, um, you should know that the only way to use it on screen is to do some modifications with your game and I'm too lazy to do that right now also um basically the rebel faction uh, is essentially uh, essentially like Egypt except the rebel faction has better chariots um, they have a better selection of archers and better selection of um, uh, what, what's the word they have better selection of um, horse archers but I should say that the rebel faction is really weak infantry um, the best that they can offer is regular hoplites but that's not what a chariot faction is born to do so, but oh well anyway um, I hope you I hope you learned something from my ranting my ex random explanation of these factions 
hope you understand a little bit more about the game and hope you guys get a bit better at it because that's my whole goal and hope you guys enjoyed subscribe rate it um, comment um, and see you later